Jeff Martin helps us keep a finger on the pulse of what's hot on the bookshelves. One of those reads is a science fiction thriller called Rift by Tulsa author Richard Cox, and both join us today. Thanks for being here. Richard, tell me a little bit about this book. How did you finally get it to a publisher? Well, um, I was playing, I play fantasy football online, and um, everyone online has a, a profile there, a bio, whatever, and on my profile I put how I uh, was an aspiring author, and um, th there happened to be an editor who was a member of our league, and he saw my profile, and he approached me and said that he edited the kind of books that I like to write, and so we developed a relationship. And um, after we kind of worked on the book together a little bit, uh, he gave me the name of some agents, and one of those agents agreed to represent me. That's very cool. I know a lot of authors spend forever going agent, 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 publishing house, publishing house, publishing house. Did you have to do any of that before you hooked up with this guy? Yeah, definitely. Um, I had written a novel previous to this one, and um, it was rejected by 40 or 50 agents. And then so I gave up on it, and I tried, I started working on Rift. And it was 25 agents, I think, or so, that rejected me before this one finally agreed to a take me on. A little piece of serendipity intervened. Yeah, it was great because for someone like me, it was you know in Tulsa, so far away from the New York publishing scene, and just felt completely out of touch and not connected. And then through the internet, this guy who had been uh, in New York before as an editor, and we found each other, and it was a, it was a really great story, and it was great for me. Well, tell us a little bit about the book. This one is out, and then you'll have another coming out soon. Yeah. Um, Rift uh, is about uh, a guy who volunteers for a teleportation experiment that goes awry. His company offers him $5 million to um, be a guinea pig for a machine that can transport someone from one place to another. And so he tries that and uh, it works, at least it seems like it works at first. And then he starts uh, noticing some problems with himself and he realizes that the machine has kind of messed him up a little bit and he has to try and figure out how to fix it and um, how to get back at the company who kind of did him wrong. Now, Jeff, science fiction, that's a big genre right now. Tell me a little bit about what people are looking for when they're going to the sci-fi shelf. Well, I think people are looking for something that is a blend of genres. I think science fiction and fiction and mystery have all merged uh, now, and these books represent a, a, you know, a merger of all three of those types of uh, uh, genres. People want, you know, suspense. They want something that's out of this world. They want something that really transports them to somewhere else, and that's a good mixture of really what people are looking for in the new uh, fiction world. Now, when did you start writing, and how did you get an idea to do this type of book? Well, it's kind of funny because I didn't read a lot of science fiction when I was younger, but I was always interested in science and kind of larger-than-life ideas. And um, I read a lot of Stephen King when I was younger, and so I wanted to write something that was kind of out there. And um, the first book was kind of metaphysical a little bit, and then I thought that it might be maybe a little bit more believable if I could take something that could maybe actually be conceivable. And that's what led me to the kind of science blending with uh, mystery or thrillers or whatever. Now tell me about The God Particle. This is going to be your new book coming out in the spring. That's got to be a thrill to not only have one novel out there, but now have a second. Yeah, The God Particle was released in May, actually, and um, it uh, is kind of a similar idea. It's a story about a guy who, uh, he, has a, he has a fall from a window in Zurich, and when he wakes up, he thinks he can see the world in ways that other people can't. He can see the future or read people's minds, or at least he thinks he can. He's not sure if he's going crazy or if this is really happening. And then there's a physicist in the, um, in the story who was looking for this uh, particle this called the Higgs boson, which people refer to as the God particle, because it could conceivably explain a lot of mysteries in the universe. And um, these two guys eventually meet up, and they realize that they're both kind of seeing, looking for the same thing. And the book, I guess, purports to explain some of the mysteries of life. Now, the mystery of life is a, a big seller these days, isn't it? Yeah, obviously, you know, you think of like the Da Vinci Code, which is probably what comes to mind. You know, people are, you know, wanting to have the big questions mixed with what they're reading these days, you know, and the God Particle certainly does that. It takes uh, questions that you usually would be, you'd find in uh, college courses and mixes them with fiction. So it gives you something to really uh, think about while you're reading, that's for sure. So we're not just reading for sheer entertainment right now? No, I, don't, I think something has changed in the reading public. They don't want to just have fluff. It's not just something they're reading just to pass the time. They want to read 
read something that's entertaining and enjoyable, but they also want to have something of substance, something with some meaning and something that maybe leaves them thinking after they're finished with the book. Now that's got to make it tough on the authors to put the time and research and effort into this, especially if you hold down a full-time job in the real world. Yeah, exactly. Well, and that's what makes the internet so fantastic because you can do research in a few hours that would have taken, you know, weeks before. And the, the way I came up with the idea for the God Particle was my editor at Random House said, well, you have another science thriller? And I'm like, uh, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, well, why don't you think of one? And I'm like, well, how do you go about doing that? So I went on the internet and I just typed in a few words, like s science and consciousness and God, and, and um, saw what returns came back on Google, basically, and started kind of browsing around and looking for different ideas. And I went from one page to another page to another page in a real kind of organic way. And in about two hours, I had pretty much the plot and the characters for the story. That's fabulous, and we can't thank you enough for being here to share it with us today. And Jeff, as always, it's been a pleasure. It's great. Thank you. Thank you.